Hey everybody, it's your Uncle Chris here. Today we're going to talk about power supplies and I want to make it super clear right up front that I am not an electrical engineer. What I know about power equipment in general, I'm completely self-taught. I am not somebody you should listen to when it comes to advice or best practices with regards to power, especially lethal mains voltage, which is one of the things you're probably going to have to play with if you build yourself a power supply. I'm not your guy. I'm just going to be talking about what my experience was, what some of the gear is, and I want you to disregard everything else I say because I don't really know what I'm doing. I know a little, but not enough to guide anybody. If you decide to build one of these things, I want you to use every safety procedure and piece of safety equipment available to you. I want you to call in an expert. I want you to do your own research. And I want you to be careful because I don't want you to get hurt. But this is something you're probably going to have to do. So I'm going to give you some information that you can use at your leisure. And hopefully that will be enough to uh, keep me off the hook, keep you safe, but still get us where we're going, which is to have a working synth. And, uh, you know, just to prove that I'm not someone who should be trusted with electronics, I'm going to lick this 9-volt battery. Hey everybody, thanks for joining me yet again. Today we're talking about power supplies, something that is unavoidable. You're going to have to build one, uh, which brings up an important point. In the last video, we were talking about that critical first order and the things that should be included in your first wave of supplies to start building something. And I didn't mention power supplies. Logically, you'd think, well, how can you do this without a power supply? Uh, and you're not wrong. The reason I didn't mention it is because if you had taken my advice on building out your workbench, you would already have a bench supply. And if you have a bench supply, then you don't absolutely need a power supply yet. Because power supplies can be a little bit intimidating, especially for a first time builder, it's not a terrible idea to build some modules first and then circle back to this. And that was the only reason I didn't mention it there. Um, although I did personally order my power supplies uh, at the same time I did my first wave of stuff. So, you know, hey, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, but Getting into power supplies is opening a huge can of worms, more than maybe any of this other stuff, about electronics as a blanket subject, and one that I'm not qualified to get into. So I really want to just focus on my experience, and there's a million kinds of power supplies out there. I'm sure that I'm overlooking so many of them, but uh, you're basically going to have to make a decision about, first of all, a big one or a small one. And if you're trying to kind of go big, then I would recommend a big one. You can also get a wall wart style power supply, and it really just comes down to how much current they're capable of outputting and how they dissipate heat. Those are really the, the main differences, in my opinion, on how these things work. Um, you can get a great bipolar wall wart driven power supply uh, that works with a wall wart and supplies a certain amount of voltage. You could probably get away with maybe one of these cabinets using one of those wall warts. And plenty of people buy them and they're great and they're, I think, rated for between 9 volt to 15 volt, which gives you the spread that's going to kind of cover everything. I don't know of any synths that require more than 15 volts. But um, in my case, because I knew I was going to do more than that, I went with a bipolar mains supply that has the transformer built into it where with a wall wart, of course, the reason it's shaped like a wall wart is because the transformer is inside that little box. In my case, I'm taking mains input. This is your traditional IEC power cord coming right out of the wall. In my case, supplying up to 115 volts. Um, of course, you, you were in the UK, it'd be 220 volts. But at any rate, enough to kill you. <laughs> and that's going in here. The transformer is inside here. And I have my bipolar supply that we'll look at in a little more detail in a second. Um, I did a music from outer space design. And uh, then you've got your panel. And let's talk for just a quick second about how I built mine, because this is not the only way to do it. Uh, you'll find designs for this very supply board that have it oriented vertically, and uh, mine is oriented horizontally. The main reason for that was heat dissipation, because this thing does generate a lot of heat. And I don't think I realized how important heat dissipation was to how much current you can suck out of one of these things. In fact, some people go 
to crazy lengths to make the heat sinks as huge as they can possibly make them. Um, I didn't really do that. I'm relying on fans instead. And by the way, that's another issue. I'm going to jump around here, obviously. But if you do install fans in your power supply, I know in my world, when you're talking about uh, IT racks and audiovisual racks, the strategy is usually exhaust, evacuation, meaning the fans in those racks push the air forward. It sucks it in from the bottom and blows it out the top. The concept being cool air in at the bottom, hot air blasted out at the top, and that, that's kind of like an exhaust cylinder way to do it. That is not what was recommended to me on these power supplies because as it was put to me by someone who knows more about this than I do, having superficial airflow that's being pulled in from wherever, in my case I have a little uh, vent here on the side, is not going to necessarily have that much impact because air is even worse than water when it comes to path of least resistance. It's just going to kind of go around the thing that you're trying to cool. That was a very good point, and I hadn't realized that, because again, my mindset is very much, you know, rack-driven. Uh, instead, I have my fan flipped the other way, so it's blowing instead of sucking. There you go, I said it. And having that airflow directed exactly on the thing you're trying to cool has a profound improvement um, on, on how cool it can keep it, and therefore how efficient your power supply is going to work. Again, something I learned on the fly. I would have totally done that wrong if I hadn't asked somebody. Um, I'm not even sure why it came up, to be honest with you. Um, the other thing, by the way, I have a power switch here, and I used a non-standard switch. I didn't buy this from the same place I bought the power supply because I had, I had designed my own panel. I'll talk about that in a minute, too. But the power switch, uh, you can have an LED illuminated power switch that actually draws that LED illumination off of the voltage coming in here from the IEC, you know, from the, from the wall input. If you do that, though, you're going to have to have a string of resistors, even, you know, even if you do it post-transformer, you're going to have to have a bunch of resistors and stuff to step that down so that this thing, you know, doesn't blow up the LED. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I thought that's what I had bought, and I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. I came to find out finally, after the, I really had to pester the manufacturer to get back to me, the illumination in this is neon, not LED. And the neon illumination takes its tap right off of the, the common uh, line from the power input. So it's actually incredibly easy. You just jump it right over, but I didn't know it was neon, and it wasn't super obvious to me uh, until I really heard that, thought about it, and then did it right. And now it works. Um, I used uh, Neutrik PowerCon for power distribution on my synth. And I use these because I'm comfortable with them and I use them at work and I know they're awesome. They are bigger than they need to be. They're overkill in every category. Uh, these are even the UV protected outdoor version, which of course this thing's never gonna be outdoors or subjected to UV, obviously. I just used them because I know they're great. And I put four of them as distribution points on my power supply because I knew I was gonna have at least a couple panels I was gonna wanna jumper power off to. And in the future, you know, who knows? These things usually don't have a, uh, a firm stopping point. So I could build <laughs> 20 more, who knows? But for now, this was what I was going for, and I decided to distribution with this. By the way, uh, we'll talk about this again in a minute. You may be tempted to jumper from output to output to output to output, and actually do wire jumpers to provide voltage to all four outputs. Don't do that. Never do that. Uh, again, Again, my, my audiovisual mind told me that was the right way to do it, but people who know more than I do about electronics said, no, you always want to do radial distribution. Radial distribution means instead of jumpering from one to two to three to four, I'm taking a point on that output and I'm splitting it four ways. So there's no jumping from one to the next. They're all going straight back to whatever that junction point was, radial, radial, radial for your plus voltage, zero voltage, and minus voltage. And we'll mention that again in a minute when we get to my power distribution in my cabinets. Uh, anyhow, I built these to be modular like everything else. Some people permanently install them inside of a cabinet. I just didn't want to do that. And I had a, uh, you know, kind of a, a diagram in mind uh, that, I'll, that I'll put up on the screen here. But 
you know, for me, I wanted to be able to shovel these in and out whenever I felt like it. So I made them three wide and built them into a box that let it comply with everything else in my cabinet. And on that box, I put ventilation panels so that, you know, I could kind of plan ahead if I ever did put it at a different end or upside down or whatever. Um, but I also planned on my cabinets themselves. You can see I have a, I have a, a grate there to let air flow so that this thing uh, can stay cool. Because again, if I vent ventilate the other side, I'm going to blow the air into the cabinet, which doesn't do me a whole lot of good. It'll just make everything hot, uh, which, you know, I haven't had that problem so much. You're also going to notice that I have two of these. And the reason I did that is because after a while it became clear that maybe three cabinets into this, I might not have enough current. Uh, this could easily happen and you just have to be a little uh, aware of it as, you, as your project builds that you may not hit a point where things just don't come on. What's going to happen instead is you're going to have voltage sag and voltage sag is going to present itself in oscillators that won't stay in tune or won't tune right to begin with or temperaments that are off and control voltages that aren't consistent and just that voltage sagging because you know these things are pulling all the same voltage from the same place and eventually things will just start acting weird and uh, that is very likely going to be why if that happens to you so be a little aware of that I have two of these which is overkill honestly for what I've got here but one wouldn't have been enough and I figured there's no point doing modular <laughs> if I don't give them continuity and make them modular in, in how they compare to one another. So I, I have two of these. It's more than I need, but I'm never going to have to worry about it again. And that was sort of the goal. The other thing I alluded to a minute ago is there is a version of this design where you can have it oriented vertically. And the reason I didn't do that, it, it was actually recommended that I don't, is because the capacitors, if you do it that way, tend to be... Uh, well, are stacked one row on top of the other row. And that's where a lot of your heat is going to come from. You don't want the bottom ones venting heat up into the base of the top ones. So if you're looking to really control um, your heat dissipation, it's pretty smart to orient them horizontally if you have the space. That board set wouldn't fit in anything smaller than a three wide and that bummed me out a little bit. I was hoping I could make it smaller, but by the time I put my toroidal transformer in here, I needed the space anyway. And even just the wires. You know, you're not talking about hookup wire anymore. You're talking about, you know, the thicker 2.4 uh, amp wire that, you know, once you get it all wadded up in there and you've done radial distribution across four outputs, plus all the, you know, the internal wiring for the back of the... It takes up space is the point. Wire management always is the thing that surprises you. And you just have to go in prepared for it. You have to leave room for wire management. Uh, the other thing I want to, again, I'm not really qualified to speak intelligently about this, but remember that ultimately what you're building here is a plus minus bipolar three rail power supply. In my case, I went with 15 volt. There is so much discussion about whether 12 volt is better than 15 volt online. Go read it if you feel like it. I did 15 volt because most of the U-Synth modules use 15 volt and practically all of the Music From Out of Space, Outer Space modules support 15 volt, sometimes by way of a small modification. But for me, you know, that was the most standard compliant way I could think of to do this and my goal was to kind of, you know, try to make it easy on myself. So I went with 15 volt. Um, in doing so, you, you learn how three rail power works and the, the one thing, again, this is specifically when you're, when you're building this, the one thing you notice inside of mine is it does have that kind of cage built around it on the inside that is, it is great to, you know, to vent, to make it look like a vent on the outside, but it's also there to provide my, uh, my earth ground. If something did come disconnected inside of this power module and there was a loose wire flopping around, I wanted to hit earth ground and go out the ground that my house uses to prevent things from having a ground fault. But this is important. <laughs> Earth ground is not what we're distributing across the zero volt of all these power supplies. We decouple Earth ground entirely and we use it strictly as a safety feature. So the cage that I built ties off to Earth ground 
And if something comes loose, it's going to protect that from energizing the rails or the panels or anything else. However, when we actually go in here and do that rectifier circuit with that array of diodes, I, I don't have time to get into that now, but that's how we take what comes out of your wall and turn it into something we can actually use here. When you do that, you're going to create a zero volt rail. And you do that by taking your plus voltage, in my case 15, and your minus voltage, in my case 15, plus 15, plus minus 15, when combined, make zero. And that's how we come up with that reference ground, in quotes, not really a ground, it's a zero. It's a zero volt rail, and that's how this three rail system is oriented in my synth. So, again, everything you see is going to be a three point power connector because I got to provide plus 15, minus 15, zero. Not, not terribly hard to understand, but fundamentally important if you're going to do this. Um, so that's why the inside of this looks the way that it does. That's why I built it the way that I did. And, uh, you know, it's funny. Again, just talking about safety again. When I built these, um, I was so afraid I had done it wrong. And I had already blown up a capacitor or two. And if you've ever done that, it's, it's fairly dramatic. Even a tiny little capacitor makes a pretty loud snap and throws shrapnel all over the place. And, you know, it's not going to kill you, but it could surprise you and it could hurt you a little bit. So the capacitors on this thing are huge. They're the size of like D-cell batteries, maybe bigger. So I was like, man, if those things explode, I could really get hurt. Uh, not to mention what might happen, you know, to me being the one unplugging and replugging and what it's going to do to my breaker box and whether it's going to, whatever. It's not going to burn your house down probably, but you certainly don't want to stand there like this when you're blowing the thing up. So <laughs> I'm embarrassed to even admit this, but I took my power supply and I sealed it into a cardboard box in my driveway and put it on the end of a 50 foot extension cord and ran it back into my garage on a power strip and hid behind the wall and kind of peeked out and boop, you know, hit the power strip button when I was far enough away from it that it wouldn't hurt me if anything happened. And sure enough, nothing happened. It was fine. And then I went over there to inspect it and realized I had installed my power switch upside down. So the whole time it wasn't even on. So I was like, ah. So I went, turned it all back off, flipped the power switch, turned it on, this time I was sure, then went back and did my test again, covering my eyes, and it still worked. So once, once you've got a working power supply and you haven't hurt yourself or blown anything up, the next thing you do is you go in and trim it. Because remember, this is a variable power supply that can run anywhere from 9 volt to 15 volt. So I had to you know, sit there with a voltmeter and tweak those, uh, those trimmers to a point where I was getting dead on plus 15 and minus 15 on my two outputs and at that point I was able to go and start wiring this in and, and looming it out to my outputs and you know making the thing functional. Um, that, 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 was probably, <laughs> that was probably the riskiest thing I built here, obviously. It was the only one where I was messing with mains voltage and um, you know and I didn't want to blow this up for other reasons too. It was a lot of work. There was the expense of these panels, these inlets, the fuses, the fans, the switches, not to mention the panel. Because you can see this is a totally non-standard panel. I designed this myself. So I actually have, uh, I designed this panel and this panel. This is my power outlet, this is my power inlet, and I have a metal shop up at the company I work for in New York, and uh, my talented machinist, Rob, up there, was able to take my designs and cut them for me. So, again, I didn't want anything to happen to this either, which, yeah, probably wouldn't have hurt it, but, you know, you get invested with these things to a point where if something does blow up or fail or break, you're going to, like, I got to do it all over again? Like, all that stress and work, it's just, you just don't want to face that. So be extra careful. Check everything three times. Call in an expert. Test and test and test and test and be really, really sure um, that you're doing everything the smartest way possible, and hopefully you'll, you'll be successful. And the last thing I want to mention here, the power distribution that I do in my cabinets is pretty straightforward. I get these great little distribution strips that are just using that, that Phoenix style plug. There's no surprises. Each switch has an inlet, one that they sort of designate for your power connection. And when I initially did this, again, talking about radial power distribution, I was still under the mindset that I would want a jumper from one to the next to the next to the next. Because the way these things are built, it just sort of tricks you into thinking that's the right way to do it. That is not the right way to do it. I fixed that. I changed that. 
Now I have everything distri distributed in radial distribution style. So when this thing or this thing puts power into that cabinet, the very first thing that happens to it is I've got that power wire nutted down, or you could use terminal blocks or, or barrier strips or whatever you want. But the point is, my plus 15 behind this panel gets split out three ways or four ways, depending on how many of those distro strips I have in here, immediately behind the panel. And everything is radial distribution, not jumpered from strip to strip to strip. That is the wrong way to do it. Don't do it that way. <laughs> um, you know, learning on the fly, you're going to make mistakes, you know. Again, behind these panels, I used these crimp on, uh, uh, you know, power fins, your, your standard spade lug connector. There's a million other ways to do it. There's a million other connectors you can use. Uh, there's probably nothing wrong with any of them. I just like something big and chunky because it's what I'm used to. You know, you can, you can get as creative as this, as, with this as you want until you get to a point where you're not being safe. Then your creativity needs to take a back seat to safety, <laughs> obviously. But um, not the hardest thing you're ever going to do, I promise. This is something you're going you're gonna to build it, you're going to do it the way they tell you to, you're going to carefully power it up, and it's going to work. And there's so many schools of thought on how to distribute power. Most people don't actually have these facing the front of the cabinet. A lot of people just have the cabinets themselves using something on the side or the back, you know, jumpering through and distributing power that way. Some people use a separate wall wart power supply for every single cabinet they own. There's no wrong way to do it. There's, there's all, all these people had a logic behind why they did it that way. None of them are wrong. Um, but again, I was just trying to share my experience, how I did it, and I, I hope that that helps somebody because um, you're going to have to do this. There's a lot of resources out there. Take advantage of them. Talk to experts. Don't listen to guys like me. I'm just trying to guide you to the people who actually can help you. That's, that's my only purpose here today.